Hey everyone, it's Mike here from the SEO Pub. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a tool in SEMrush that I found a lot of people are not aware of, and it's a really cool tool for generating topic ideas for your content. Before I dive into that, I wanna make sure that if you haven't already, head over to the seopub.com, sign up for the email list there where I share tips and strategies like this every single week. All right, so let's dive into SEMrush. If you go into the module here under content marketing, called Topic Research. I was talking to somebody the other day who's a longtime user of SEMrush who had no idea this even existed, which was what gave me the idea to figure if, and I've talked to other people who are users of SEMrush and didn't realize that this tool exists. And it's something that I use quite a bit for generating topic ideas. Sometimes even for when I'm getting started at the very beginning of keyword research for a client, I'll come here first to just kind of brainstorm and generating some ideas. And so what you can do is you enter in a topic that you want to do some research on. So for example, um, I was just messing around with uh, sprint project management. And it's going to take it a moment now. It's going to pull in some data here and give us some content ideas. Okay, so what SEMrush does here is it aggregates data on the most popular topics within the niche that you give it or the topic that you give it. Um, for example, with Sprint Project Management, we have um, topic cluster under Scrum, Scrum Master. Um, sometimes you'll get ones that I'm not quite sure how they fit in here, like red flags. I'm not sure where that, that goes. Project management software, agile project management, agile methodologies. And what it does is it ranks them by volume initially. So it's the overall search volume. You also have these options where you can go by difficulty or topic efficiency. Topic efficiency is an interesting one. It's kind of a combination of search volume mixed in with uh, keyword difficulty. So, or, or how difficult it would be to rank for some of the topics in there. So. It's kind of a, a blend of the two, and I'm not sure you know how much they weigh uh, search volume versus how much they weigh the, the keyword difficulty, but it gives you topics that could be easier to rank for that are within your, your topic cluster. But I'm gonna just stick with the, the volume here. And what they do is they give you these cards. For example, we can look at project management software, and it will show the top headlines basically the top um top pieces of content under that that topic as well as some questions so you, and you want to pay attention to these bullhorns here the green means that it's highly relevant dark blue is a little less relevant light blue less relevant still and then the gray means it's not quite as relevant in the eyes of of semrush in this topic cluster over here are questions these are questions that are found under the topic, and what they do is they sort them by, now this one only shows what, how, and which, but they'll also have, um, let me go to another one here. Yeah, they'll have more is, uh, if we go Scrum Master, how, can, does. So it'll break down the question, so if you can either look at all of them, or if you just want like the how-to type questions, you can look at the how, um, the what, but I, I usually stick with kind of the all questions. And between the headlines and these questions here, I get a lot of topic ideas and things that we want to cover on, on my client websites um, that maybe we haven't covered yet or haven't covered in enough detail. This is just a great way to brainstorm ideas. Of course, a big buzzword right now within SEO is topic authority. And this is a great way to make sure that you're covering multiple areas of a of a topic and i don't put a ton of weight always in you know the search volume matters but sometimes when when you just care about topic authority it's not always about search volume but about covering a topic entirely so even though you know what is sprint in agile only gets searched 390 times a month i still probably want to cover that topic or make sure that's a, at least a piece you know a section within a piece of content that we already have. 
Okay, but if we go back up to the top here, so you may find things like daily scrum meeting is definitely a topic that I want to make sure that we're covering. Um, sprint goals, sprint review meetings is a whole other topic that you can cover. And you can get some some good ideas, you know, just not just covering sprint review meetings, but maybe we want to do a separate piece of content about best practices for sprint reviews. Or maybe you just want to make sure that within this piece of content we're going to create that we cover best practices for uh, a sprint meeting, um, how to run an effective sprint meeting. Um, and then we can look at the questions too. There's 41 questions here that have pulled up and um, we can search through those for either topic ideas or heading ideas or even maybe an FAQ section or FAQ page that we want to create. A lot of ideas, a lot of brainstorming can come out of this, this little simple tool. If you want to, if you find something that you like, um, for example, what it, you know, I like this sprint review meeting best practices, you can add it to your favorites. Three steps for a sprint review meeting. What is a sprint review? I like these ideas, so I'm going to run um, how to run an effective sprint meeting. What is the purpose of sprint review? How to prepare for a sprint review planning. So I like these, these questions, these topics. So you can click on there and it will save it into your favorite ideas. And then I can go over here and I have all these saved over here. Now, if we go back to the content ideas, um, they do give you a couple other reviews besides the card. The cards is the one I like the most. They have the Explorer, which just breaks it down by subtopic. Um, rather than the cards, it's just kind of a, a list, like more like what you would see in a spreadsheet. Overview is just, a again, just a, a really basic overview of kind of the top headlines according to backlinks and top 10 most interesting questions under sprint project management. And then they have a mind map view. I don't really particularly like this, this view. It does, it doesn't do anything for me. It's um, especially on bigger topics like this. It just feels kind of useless. It's just too much, just isn't really efficient to me, but it is there if you like that. Another cool thing that they do is you can actually enter a domain in here and see if a website has, covered a topic or at least if they're ranking for one of these topics so for example if we're, if we're talking about sprint project management we want to see what ClickUp has done in there and we're going to click get content ideas we go back to the topic research tab and it's going to load this up um, and actually i already did this one already so i'm just going to pull this up and if we go look at the cards again what it does is it turns when you see this green, that means that ClickUp has an article within this topic that's ranking in the top 10. So if we go to story points, one of these articles here is ClickUp. There it is, this one. So what are agile story points and how to calculate them? So all these ones that are highlighted in green, you can see how much content ClickUp's put out there about this topic. And gives you an idea too if you you know if you care about topic authority, if you know that there's an authority site in within a topic, you can put them in here and kind of see what which one of these topics are they hitting, and you want to make sure that your website is doing the same. So that's it for this tool. Again, it's a, it's a really simple tool within SEMrush that I know there's a lot of users out there that aren't actually aware of it. As I was talking to somebody last week who's been using SEMrush for a couple years and had no idea this even existed. So um, definitely something worth checking out. It's a great tool for generating topic ideas. It's also a great place to get started in keyword research. If you're entering a new niche or you, you're working with a new client and you're just not quite sure where to start exactly with the content, this is a great place to go if you have some broad topics that you, you want to cover just to start getting familiar with them yourself and, and getting an idea what kind of content's out there, what kind of content is popular um, for people within this niche and making a plan from there. So that's it for this video. Again, if you haven't yet, make sure you head over to theseopub.com, sign up for the email list there, and I'll catch everyone in the next video.